Welcome, everybody. This is How to English Teach and Learn with Gavin M. It's a podcast about teaching and learning English as a foreign language. All opinions given. <laughs> just, just carry on, carry on. All opinions stated. Are... No, all opinions stated. Well, I said stated. All opinions stated are personal. Oh, one more time. <clears throat> all opinions stated are personal. And references will be given where possible. Necessary, possible, yes, where possible. Is that that's seamless? Better, isn't it? Perfect. It is perfect. Right. Okay. Cue music. Episode something, oh. something. It's thirty-five, isn't it? Thirty. Yep. Episode thirty-five. We decided to call this one Evergreen. Evergreen. Why is it Evergreen? Because, Because it's your favourite song by Will Young, who was X Factor's. Was it X Factor? Maybe not X Factor. Oh. God, was it X Factor? I have no idea. That was the first ever reality television music winner. Mm -hmm. um, his, I don't know, winning song that was. A... Did he win, or did the other one win? He wow! Oh, I don't know. Maybe he came second or third, and he oh, actually. Oh, was it Gareth Gates? Did Gareth Gates Maybe win? Maybe he won. This is terrible. We don't know. And it turned out the the runner up actually was more successful because who remembers Gareth Gates? Well, yeah. I mean, who remembers Evergreen by Will I'm not, Young? I'm not sure if any of the listeners know what we're talking about. Anyway, you Evergreen. Can, you can always Google it, but um, I think you're actually not talking about the song. Am you're... I talking about trees, Gav? Am I talking about trees that bear foliage throughout the year? Yes. No. No, no you're not. No, no. Well, I, think, I thought you were about to talk about them. No, no. Well, I could talk about them. I'm sure it'd be very interesting, but we're not that kind of podcast. You'd no. have to go to one of those nature podcasts for that yes. sort of stuff. That's true. So evergreen meaning? Meaning always fresh. Yes. Or remaining popular or timeless. Oh, that's good. In relation to teaching English. Yes, and learning English. And learning English. Teach last and week, learn with Gavin M. Teach and learn with Gavin M. Because last week was keeping, keeping it, it fresh. fresh. So we're actually moving on from not simply fresh, but green. Which is sort of going to be similar, I think. Um, but before we do start, there is uh, a quite a nice comment that came last week um, from Selwyn underscore Darier. Was that Selwyn again? Selwyn yeah. again, yeah. And um, they've said, uh, talking about being tech savvy, um, and this is this how we keep our lessons fresh by using educative spaces endowed with technology oh wow uh in different senses so we didn't really talk about technology we didn't really talk about fresh methods i don't think so that was a very good point that's true we didn't mention that so what would you like to add gav to the the whole keeping it fresh keeping it possibly fresh. evergreen uh conversation about you know how em do you embrace technology mm, which yes. is what selwyn says as well yeah And even technology for technology's sake Could be kind of fun. What is that? That's, that's just using it just because it's a fun medium. And it might not even lead to any greater learning than using a piece of paper and a pen, but it could be a lot of fun. So you just mean the format you present the lesson yeah. with can actually be quite motivating? Yeah, and using people. apps, using you know online mm. stuff. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of these games that you can play or um, just even giving people a worksheet on an, a tablet or something, I guess. Ooh. It's modern. That is, that is keeping it fresh. Yeah, so keeping it fresh, meaning, you know, using new techniques, thinking of new ways mm -hmm. to... To keep interest mm -hmm. and attention. Yep. But evergreen, evergreen, Gav. Like, evergreen problems, oh, perhaps. Yeah. Evergreen principles. Evergreen solutions. Evergreen solutions, nice. Evergreen methods. Evergreen in the sense of, like, an evergreen problem in teaching would be what? Uh, the student is late. It's, yeah, it is always gonna happen isn't it, is. it? no matter things. what year it is no matter what the technology no matter what platform you're using yep. there's always going to be late students yep. you can't do anything about that that was the first thing that came to mind 
Yeah. Um, yeah, Great. there are there are always students will always be students. Te- teachers will always be. T- or maybe we won't. Maybe we will be robots eventually. Well, this is also something that people are talking about. Okay. These, um... That's not evergreen, is it? That's future technology. Well, the teacher is evergreen in in the sense that there needs maybe there needs to be some figure where the information is coming yeah. from that figure. Maybe it's not even a figure. Maybe it's a, a computer, portal. a portal. Okay. Well, so um, students are, w- a plug directly into your brain. Would you say that students are more self-motivated these days than they were in the past? I mean, so many people go online now and, and start courses, like yeah. learn themselves. They're kind of I think self-perpetuating we're, Not quite that. Learning. But I think we're living in a world now where we think anything is possible if we have the internet, perhaps. Okay. If you've got the time. Like, yeah. you can learn to dot, dot, dot in however many hours with this online YouTube video. Oh, right, okay. It, it's the, you know, we are living in a generation of it's all there. Right. It's there, the um, information is there. Yes. It's just whether you've got the motivation and the stamina yeah. to keep going with it. So I think the evergreen aspect is that people are always going to want to learn to do things. Sure. But we've got these other methods of learning now. Yeah, but, and uh, students might need to filter some of this information because there is so much out there now. There's mm. so much available. As there's... you say, videos online, there's courses. Yeah, so that's a skill we're having to adapt and learn and find ourselves, you yeah. know, what is good information, what is maybe not so useful information, yeah. and what is good for you and what's going to work for you. Mm-hmm. And I think that is trial and error, which is a bit of a time thing again you have to spend a lot of time on it yeah and I find like if I find a podcast I like I feel so loyal to it Mm. that I I feel like it's almost an obligation to listen to it Mm -hmm. and it gets to be a bit uh negative in the end because I feel like I can't stop doing it I can't stop listening to it because I've started and I've heard all the 50 or whatever podcasts up until this point so Mm -hmm. I I kind of owe it I don't know who I owe it to the people making the podcast maybe myself maybe that I just don't stop listening because maybe I've lost interest oh and I think it's the same with maybe online lessons or online platforms or videos or audio books or whatever yeah i think there is this sort of tend i think that for me there's a tendency just to keep going with it do you think that might depend on your personality then because i would Age, say probably as well oh i wasn't <laughs> gonna say that but i i'm absolutely the oh, opposite well, there you i go. would just abandon it if i was bored like halfway so through or you, after 10 episodes or how do you know when the right time is to abandon it this is my problem. there's just so much out there i think dedicating yourself to one single thing is um a bit of a waste of time really well in this day and age it is because there is just so much there available yeah. so this is i think a bit of a, an inner conflict i have with okay. myself it's definitely not age all right I shouldn't say age, my age, my own age. But I just think I I come from maybe a, a background of always finishing things. Okay. There's no end, is there, with this technology we have now? It doesn't end. It's sure. infinite. It's evergreen. No, it's. No, I think it's we've evergreen. detracted slightly, but it's infinite amounts of information. It's perpetual. So you need to know when to switch off from it, when to take a break from it. Right. So, yeah, it's... Great when you use it well, Mm -hmm. but I think you've got to know yourself. Know know what you need. Yeah, what works for you as well. Some things work for you and um, other things don't. Even if you set a time limit or just say you're going to do this thing for a three-month period and then actually just reflect on how you feel about it because I think it can just turn into a chore of, of doing it and it's not fun, is it? No. So I think... I don't know. Evergreen. It needs to be fun. I don't know. We're not really work. What? What? We're not talking about evergreen now. Talk about evergreen. Well, I like, I like that idea that it, it could be something that you always go to. So, like some of our students have apps that they use every day. They like a word a day, or they listen to mm-hmm. six minute English or something. That that's something that they always do. It will always improve their English. That's a really positive thing. Mm. Is that evergreen? Yeah. Kind of. We need to keep the fun evergreen. Maybe yeah. that's it. Okay. Make, t- maintain the fun side of it. Yes. Enjoyment side of it. Yes. I mean, you, you touched on this last week. You said maybe it doesn't have to be fun just as long as it's 
um, working for you. Yeah. Personally, I like it to be fun, though. Uh, it needs to have a bit of fun. Was that me? Doesn't, yeah. Doesn't sound like me. You the one I'm I the fun teacher. To. Mm, okay. No, but you said something about self-study, that okay. if it's working for you. If you're seeing results, then oh, yeah. maybe it's quite hard to have fun on your own. Yeah, but it would be <laughs> difficult to maintain, I think. What? You said if it was boring. How could you maintain it if it's boring? Well, some people do. That was what my whole point was. I spend a lot of time on things and then realise, God, I'm not enjoying this and it's boring and why am I doing it? And I need to recognise that and stop before it gets to that point or at, when it gets to that point. Okay, evergreen. So, that's a poor, that's an evergreen problem I have. <laughs> so anyway. So you mean like recurring? No, I think evergreen is like timeless. Right. Timeless. I'm so, trying to nail you down on, on this uh, evergreen definition, I think. I'm well, still... you said students being late, that's an evergreen problem. Right. You can't change it. Okay, let's it's... move on to our second point then. Mm, what is that? I thought, for example, evergreen would be evergreen lessons. Mm. And I know we... We hit on this before, which was um, like seasonal lessons. You always have your maybe your Easter lesson or your Halloween lesson or your Christmas lesson. These are the things that just keep coming up each year. And teachers can rely on those materials and mm-hmm. use them every season. Mm-hmm. And the students can kind of expect it. <laughs> if Easter's coming, your teacher's probably going to teach you about Easter again and talk about eggs and painting them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got my own thoughts on that. Go on. It's fine if you're doing it like once or twice, but yeah, I agree. It is an evergreen topic. It's a safe topic. But yeah. Outside the box, maybe not just the typical. Well, I, I'm I'm just giving themed. obvious examples. Yeah. I mean, there could be like other cultures. Uh, nice traditions or you know events that are held That's good. Those, those can be really Comparing fascinating good. Yeah. But yeah i agree like the first maybe time you have the students it's nice to talk about traditions and and for them to explain how they celebrate yeah but i wouldn't do that again the next year do you I not think it would well, I, do it for, I do it for quite a few years and right there's the so, same students yeah there's so much to do Oh, well, if you haven't covered all the traditions. Yeah, but how do you remember which traditions you talk about? Well, like about? I said last time, they just say, um, teacher, we've done this already, oh, and then I'd switch God, to the next this thing. This is getting like deja vu. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, I try and just see a different aspect or something topical that's happening in the news at the time. So it's an evergreen topic, but with a f- keeping it fresh oh, undertone. I was going to say, but uh, evergreen is, isn't like a current event, though, surely. No, I think it's you're saying like um, holidays and festivals yeah. are an evergreen topic, which I agree like, they happen like every year. But... If there was a pandemic, that, uh, you, <laughs> hypothetically, you, let's just say there is. You yeah. just yeah, that would well. Although thinking about it, that might be a long term. Um, <laughs> top, no, forget it. Okay, I just meant like one incident that happened. Then you, you obviously it would be relevant for that time, mm. but then you wouldn't. We wouldn't go back to it a few weeks later no, because not, students wouldn't be interested. Not in for it. that. No, I'm talking like an umbrella topic of Christmas, and then within that you can do lots of things. So I agree, the topic is evergreen. Mm-hmm. Maybe keep the lessons slightly more for, like with variety, okay. not just the same thing. Like we're going to do Mariah Carey's "All I Want for Christmas" again this year <laughs> with a gap fill. Oh, I love that song. Okay. Well, I think, you know, that that is debatable because those Christmas songs are supposed to be repetitive yes. and annoying They're like, and what, incredibly catchy. What's the, yeah, catchy. Or what's the other one? Um, ear, earworms. Yeah, yeah, they okay. are earworms. earworms. So if you really want to make your students hate you, oh, here we are again. We're doing the, the same song, but with different words gap filled this year. Yay. Remember what they were last year? No, mm. nobody does. So no. we're doing it again until That's you brilliant. remember. That sounds like loads of fun. All right, All right. Right. Then other topics might be. I I actually had a quick Google and I noticed that fluentu dot com, fluent you maybe it's fluent pre- you fluent you okay yeah it's, it's the letter u dot com. They've got a whole section on kind of evergreen. I, I would call them evergreen topics. Mm. So ones that you can always talk about. Students, are you sitting there thinking what are these topics, Gav? Yes, well, I'm going to tell you. Are. I'm going to tell you now. now. They are, for example, talking about hobbies. Ah. Who doesn't want to talk about their hobbies? Everyone's got one. That's it. Exactly. I guess. Time. Actually, time. We've we've done an episode on time, haven't we? 
Yes, time and timing. That was right, episode 26. Yes. Um, That's a great topic for it. What is time? Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) This is what it says. Um, Time. For example, uh, getting older and, um, you know, what time do you go to work? Never gets old, talking about getting old. (laughs) (laughs) And sleep and music and... Films and you know all okay. these things. Music, films, books. Yeah, sleep. I like the way you put that one in as well. Okay. Well, there's. For, I, I liked it. I'm going to put a link in the mm. uh, show notes. The show notes. Why did you never remember that word? I was yes. going to say footnotes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's nice. So evergreen themes evergreen and topics. topics, and students love to talk about them. They love talking about it. I love listening to them talk about pets, it. I'd say pets. Oh, well, we, this could go on for a while. Children, if... family. Yep. Yeah. Cooking, if that's applicable. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yes, I agree. That's an endless list. Yeah. Uh, okay. What about methods, Gav? I mean, there's all these new types of methods for teaching, but which ones are evergreen? Which ones are going to stay around forever, do you think? Oh, that is a very Tried good question. Tried and tested. I think we should do a whole episode on different teaching methods i think we might be struggling to fill this one do you not want to just cover it now <laughs> that, that was that was my code for saying i need to prepare oh, you haven't thought about it well I, yeah there, there's there are lots of different methods i've tried a lot of them or probably most of them i've i think just a variety i think there'll always be methods that we use repetition perhaps drilling Mm-hmm. Practice. Mm-hmm. Um, you mean techniques, not actual methodologies, then? What's the difference? Well, the, the techniques you, you are inside the methods. Oh, they're, okay. They're part of it, so. Oh, okay. So repetition. Yeah, I mean, I, I was thinking, for example, often my students make mistakes. Uh, third person S, like students are always making these mistakes. So I write on the board things like people, everyone, nobody, Gavin, someone grandmother and um students have to write or have to tell me is it like or likes oh nice. so okay. people like or likes everybody like or likes and you can do this with have or has okay and these are like these are totally evergreen mistakes mm. that students make what i'm getting from this gav is examples this is a technique it, well it's technique yeah and i think that's going to be evergreen well, really. it's, an, it's an exercise you really. need examples Yes. Lots of them. Lots of examples, yeah. And that's never going to get old, is it? We're always going to The examples need them. will change. Yeah. But we'll always have we'll always have examples. <laughs> We're yeah. always going to use them. Yeah. Okay. So that that was our evergreen you you talked about some methodologies. I think we definitely will do an episode about actual teaching right. okay. methodologies. Really get do into it. Do you think that testing will be evergreen? Testing? Mm. What do you mean testing? Progress like, testing, level testing, um, testing of, uh, you know, just end of course testing. Do you think that it's just something we do for bureaucratic reasons or do you think it has a purpose? Do you think in the future we will still do it mm. as English teachers? I think in, in schools, for example, in some Scandinavian skulls. A lot of that's been dropped now. Has and it really? Yeah. Wow. I, I'll have to research that. And it's <laughs> not footnotes. What is it? Show notes. Show notes. Okay. <laughs> um, and I think in British schools, it's it's still really in vogue to test kids as young as possible. Yeah. So what's the? It depends a bit on the culture. Mm. I, I I personally think that no, I, I haven't. I, I couldn't possibly guess about the future. Not really. No. I, I don't think testing is very important, but I think it's also it's good for the students to to have a sense of mm. progressing. Mm. I don't think testing is always the best way, but yeah. like, what does progress mean, and why do we see it as this grade or number or whatever? Yeah, sure. It seems it's such a shame that we are well, so. You, predetermined you know that way but if you compare it to other skills like i don't know like computing like if you needed to learn computer language you doing a test would show that you're competent in that language and it's a very specific thing so why Which would it not be the same it's for a nice comparison because it is a language yeah but i think a computer language is something you only use with a computer whereas a language a spoken language yeah surely the test is whether or not you can send an email or order a coffee or sure. or have a conversation with someone. So it yeah. seems a bit limited to test people based only on, 
you know, grammar, yeah. multiple choice questions. I, I was just comparing, um, you know, teaching a student some computer language in order to write a line of code that would mm. successfully process something mm. um, to learning English and, yeah, like you say, being able to send an email. Okay. I guess if the outcomes are both the same, if they're both successful, then, yeah, they've passed the test. That was a good question. I think maybe they're going to be evergreen. I think, think people, institutions, companies are going to want to see some form of level, mm -hmm. aren't they? Mm -hmm. OK. So that was evergreen. Not the best topic, perhaps, to choose. I liked it. I'm still not completely sure what evergreen is. It's a bit is. fluffy, isn't it, as a title? I just, I'm not sure either. I think it's a great title. I think we just didn't do it much justice. Uh, justice um, so. I just felt like it's nice in a reaction to last week, keeping yeah. it fresh. What keeping it stays fresh. the same, it's sort of the opposite idea. But... OK. Well, why don't you tell me a bit more about your evergreen in your classroom? How do you... Use uh -huh. your evergreen materials. I what? don't really consider my materials evergreen. I just okay. think the principles maybe stay evergreen. Okay. Like we said, Sounds... keeping it fun, yep. moving people around, mixing it up, making sure there's a lot of speaking mm -hmm. practice mm -hmm. and a variety of activities. Within that, it's flexible, but basically those things don't change. So that will sustain interest from the student in your lessons yeah. and keep them progressing, hopefully. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you think the online teaching will become evergreen? I think it's becoming standard. Yeah. Well, yeah, kind of is evergreen-ish, yeah. I suppose. And I don't think it's just because of the last few months. I, I think it was quite popular, well, a few years ago, really. Mm. But this is the push we all needed, I think, to really set it in motion. Yeah. This um, seems now something that's very doable yeah and i think companies are seeing that as a potential direction to go in whereas yeah. i think a lot of english language schools were quite reluctant to offer online lessons mm -hmm. before this whole you know pandemic started i right. think it was the lesser choice and maybe students didn't really like it either but now it's just totally normal. I think it? that's it's a really like... good point. So do you think schools should charge the same for online lessons as they did for face-to-face -face lessons? Yeah, definitely. Why? Well, I think it's just as much work, if not perhaps more, or at least at the moment while we're transitioning. I think it takes a lot of planning. And okay. You have to adapt your materials and think of it. To actually teach a successful lesson online is really hard. Okay. Um, but yeah, I know some schools do charge less for online or they pay less for online well, yeah that's what i was going to say charge or pay perhaps both oh well, i hope it's both i hope they're not charging <laughs> the same and just paying less um and i it don't should know be less admin shouldn't it yeah i think it is for the school it's less to actually do so okay. I, d I don't think it should be any different okay do you? that's really interesting um i think that as long as you're given the same quality lessons, then no, there's no difference. I, I, I see this in going into the future as being, you know, the norm. Yeah, from a teaching sort of point of view, it's much more efficient that you can teach back-to-back -back lessons online. You yeah. haven't got to travel anywhere. Yeah, It's great for that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very tiring. I remember when I used to have the occasional online lesson before we were doing it every day. And it was sort of a special thing. It's like, oh, I've got an online lesson. Oh, it's a treat. Can I do an hour on Skype? Not sure. It's very <laughs> draining, isn't it? Couldn't possibly think of doing 90 minutes That's on Skype. True. That's it true. It was sort of an average 45 minute lesson was a Skype lesson because right. everybody accepted it was hard. Yeah. Uh, on both sides. So, like, intensive. You yeah, mean? for okay. the students and the teacher. Yeah. So now it's sort of the norm to just do an hour and a half and that's wow. normal and then you do another one straight afterwards that's long though an hour and a half on yeah. skype or yeah it on... is quite long but it's it's about learning the techniques and adapting accordingly and making your lessons still have that dynamic fun okay you know movement of different pace and yeah. and all of that it, it's it's good. It's a different skill set again, which why why I love the job so much. You know, it, it's it does change. It is always changing. Yeah. It's incredibly adaptable. Okay. The teaching itself is a sort of the evergreen part of it. Okay. I'm the evergreen part of it. Yeah, yeah, you're you're the consistent factor in all of this. I'm the pine tree in all this. You're not losing your leaves. Either. No, they don't have leaves. I've got needles, sharp ones. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>
<laughs> or maybe some of them have leaves. Okay. I don't know. Are there any tips that we could leave our student Leave list? out. Oh, oh sorry. It's good, it? Perfect. Um, our student listeners with some sort of evergreen tips. Um, I think just try to revise what you learn. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Um, keep it in your mind and practice that English as much as you can. Yes. That's that, it. That shouldn't ever change. That's okay. going to always be the same. So lots of repetition and lots of practice. Mm. Yeah, use it in your writing or your speaking, whatever you're, you're doing. That's brilliant. So thanks, Em. Thanks, Gav. And thanks to all the listeners. They are listening to How to English, Teach and Learn with Gav and... Em. And we'll see you all next week. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao.